6, video lecture 3, percent composition. To figure out the percent composition of a substance, we're going to take the mass of the element and divide it by the mass of the compound. We then take this and multiply it by 100 because we're moving from a decimal to a percent. What's the percent composition of carbon dioxide? Well, in order to do this, we're going to need to know the formula of carbon dioxide. Now, the mass, the total mass of the compound is equal to the mass of carbon plus 2 times the mass of oxygen. The mass of carbon is 12.01, and the mass of oxygen is 16. So we take 12.01 plus 2 times 16 and get a total mass of... 44.01. Now, in order to do this, we're going to take the mass of the carbon present. So there's 12.01 AMUs of carbon divided by the mass of our compound, 44.01. So 12.01 divided by 44.01 gives us 0.2728. 925, etc. Well, we have four significant figures in 12.01 and four significant figures in 44.01. So we count our four significant figures, the 8, and the 9 tells the 8 to become a 9. So we have 0.2729. Now, in order to take this decimal and make it a percent, we multiply by 100, and we get 27.29% carbon. For oxygen, we have to take another step. There's 2 times 16 for oxygen, which means that the mass of oxygen is 32.00. We take that divided by 44.01, and we see, and we get 0 0.727, etc. Again, we have four significant figures and four significant figures. So our fourth significant figure is the 1. We look to the right. The 0 tells the 1 to stay a 1. So we have 0 0.7271. Again, we take this and multiply it by 100 to create a percent, and we get... 72.71%. So there are two percent compositions for carbon dioxide. What is the percent composition of sodium hydroxide? Well, sodium has a mass of 22.99. Oxygen has a mass of 16.00, and hydrogen has a mass of 1.01. .01. So we add all those together, and we get a total mass of 40.00. So now we take each of our individual... So for sodium, we take 22.99 divided by 40... And we get 0.57475. Our fourth significant figure is the 7. So we look to the right. And we go point, or, uh, point 0.5748. And then again, multiply that number by 100. And we get 57.48 percent sodium. For oxygen, we take our 16.00, divided that by 40.00, and we get 0 0.4. Well, we have four significant figures here and four significant figures here, so our answer needs to have four significant figures. 
So to do this, we'll add three trailing zeros. Remember, these trailing zeros are significant because of the decimal point. So we take this number and multiply it by 100, and we get 40.00% of the mass because of oxygen. And then finally, hydrogen. Hydrogen has the mass of 1.01. .01. We divide that by 40.00, and we get 0 0.0225. Well, here we only have three significant figures. So we'll go to our third significant figure, the 2. Look to the right, and the 5 tells the 2 to become a 3. So we have 0 0.0253. Multiply this by 100 to make it a percent, and we have 2.53% because of the hydrogen. So if we want to take a look at the percent composition of a structural formula, here we see that we have four atoms of carbon, and we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten atoms of hydrogen. Well, to figure out the mass of this, we take 4 times our 12.01, which is our mass of, high, of carbon, plus 10 times 1.01, .01, our mass of hydrogen, and we get 58.14 AMU. So if we want to look at the percent composition because of carbon, well, carbon is 4 times 12.01, and that gives us a mass of 48.04. We divide this by our 58.14, and we get a and we get 0 0.82628, etc. Well, we have four significant figures here and four significant figures here, so our fourth significant figure is the two. We look to the right, and the 8 tells the 2 to become a 3. So we have 0 0.8263. Multiply this by 100 to get a decimal, and we get 82.63% of carbon. Our hydrogen is 10 times 1.01. .01. So 10.1 divided by 58.14. This gives me 0 0.173718. Well, in this case, 10.01 has three significant figures, and 58.4 has four. So we round to the smallest number. So in this case, it's the three. We look to the right, and the seven tells the three to become a four. So I have 0 0.174. I multiply this number by 100, and I get 17.4% as a result of oxygen. Take a minute and try to come up with the percent compositions of water and sodium bicarbonate. Click the link, click the link to try more percent composition problems. Otherwise, continue on for our next topic. So far, we've discussed two of our three types of chemical formulas already. We've talked about molecular formulas, things like NaOH and H2SO4, that tell us what's there and how many of them. So like in NaOH, we have one sodium, one oxygen, and one hydrogen. Whereas in H2SO4, we have two hydrogens, 
one sulfur, and four oxygens. We've dealt a little bit with structural formula, like telling you that we have four carbons bonded in a row, and those four carbons are bonded to hydrogens. So we see not only what's there, but what's bonded to what. A third type of formula that we're going to work with is the empirical formula. Our empirical formula gives us the smallest whole number ratio of a compound. Sometimes this is going to be the same as the molecular formula, but not always. If it's an ionic compound, it most likely will. If it's a covalent compound, though, it may not. So, if we look at the molecular formula for water, well, water is H2O. To get the empirical formula, we're considering the ratio of two hydrogens to one oxygen. Since that is the smallest whole number ratio and we can't reduce it, our empirical formula is also H2O. But if we look at hydrogen peroxide, H2O2. Here we have that ratio of 2 to 2. This ratio can be reduced to 1 to 1. So the empirical formula of hydrogen peroxide is HO. Methane is CH4. Here we have a ratio of 1 to 4. Well, that can't be reduced down any lower, so our empirical formula for methane is still CH4. Glucose is C6H12O6. Here we have a 6 to 12 to 6 ratio. Well, if we divide all of those numbers by 6, we can get a 1 to 2 to 1 ratio. So glucose's empirical formula is CH2O. Octane is C8H18. Here we have a ratio of 8 to 18. Well, if we divide by 2, we get a 4 to 9 ratio. So the empirical formula would be C4H9. Additional percent composition problems. <clears throat> What's the percent composition of iron 2 oxide? Well, to do this, the first thing we're going to need is we're going to need the formula of iron 2. We look up iron 2 and we see that it has a charge of positive 2, and oxide has a charge of negative 2. So we crisscross our charges, Fe minus 2, O plus 2, drop the signs, and reduce. The 2 to 2 ratio can be reduced down to 1 to 1. So we look up on our periodic table and we see that iron has a mass of 55.85. Oxygen is 16.00. When we add them together, we get a total mass of 71.85. So for iron, we take 55.85 divided by 71.85 and we get 7.777318. Well, both of these numbers have two significant figures. So we look at the three, we round to the right, and we have 0.7773. Multiply this number by 100 to get rid of the decimal, and we have 77.73% is iron. Now, oxygen, we take our 16.00 divided by 71.85, and we get 0.222686. Well, 
Well, we still have four significant figures, so we're rounding to the six. The eight tells the six to become a seven, so we have 0.2227. Multiply this by 100, and we get 22.27% because of the oxygen. If we consider our structural formula, we have three atoms of carbon. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight hydrogens and one oxygen. So we take three times 12.01, eight times 1.01, and 1 times 16.00. We get a total mass of 60.11. So, to take our carbon, we have 36.03 because of the carbon, so 36.03 divided by 60 Point one one, and we get point five nine nine four zero. Rounded to four significant figures, rounded to four significant figures, is point five nine nine four, multiplied by a hundred, and we have fifty nine point nine four percent because of the carbon. Now hydrogen, we have a mass of 8.08 .08 divided by 60.11. This gives us 0.1344. Well, 8.08 .08 has two significant figures, three significant figures, so we'll round to the first four. The four tells it to stay a four, so we have 0.134. Take this number times 100, and we get 13.4% of the mass is hydrogen. And lastly, we have oxygen. We have 16.00 divided by 60.11, and we get a 0.26617. Uh, two, six, well, we have four significant figures, so we'll round to the one, so we have 0.2662, which as a percent is 26.62% because of the oxygen. You can continue, or you can jump back to the lecture, or end the lecture, if you need no more instruction.